It can't be that bad, oh, 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 it can't be that bad. Hey, man. Oh, shit. What's wrong? Or what's I didn't realize the final issue of Doomsday Clock just came out, dude. You got to get that. You got to hop Today's on that Wednesday, quick. Right? It today came out today. is Wednesday, right? Today is Wednesday. Fuck. What are you doing here it's recording? The, it's the, I, dude, honestly. You might leave this recording honestly, session. It's the final issue. I've been waiting for this issue for two years, bro. It was supposed to be a one-year run. It's been five, five fucking years since they started this shit, dude. Wow. You sound really stoked. I am actually very excited. You should have gone to Zeppelin Comics when you were downtown. I am. Yeah, I haven't, haven't been there since been they there. moved. No. Oh, yeah, the, their new spot. I don't really dope, go to dude. downtown Benicia very often. Oh no, you don't really. Not as not as often as you when you used to work there. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's probably why I don't go there anymore because eh, I used to work there. There's no no reason to do so anymore. Christian, what's up, dude? You ever been to a uh, uh, work Christmas party? Actually, no. Really? Sadly, no. Your company, the, your company seems like a company that would throw a party. Are they too? The HR? year that I joined oh, was, was the, the year, year that, that they like, stopped. No more. No, it's too much money. We're getting more corporate, and there's too many employees, That's and we don't want to spend the money to, to rent out a place and or even do it at the office. Yeah, apparently, before my arrival, the OGs at my job, they used to get down. They Everyone gets get down at down. Christmas parties, dude. Is your work doing something? We do Christmas parties, yeah. Uh, and then um, I remember when I used to work at the Cheesecake Factory, it wasn't like a company thing anymore, but our, our restaurant would have... Like a gift exchange in Irvine, we used to do like a gift exchange and a party. A lot of people had kids, so they'd bring the kids. Uh-huh. And would they have the party at the restaurant mm-hmm. after it was closed yeah. down? Really? Yeah. We would start like maybe an hour into before the restaurant closed, uh-huh. uh, so it didn't run super late. But yeah, once everybody once everybody left, we just had the restaurant to ourselves. So was it kind of weird to be in a location where you usually work and you're in work mode, but there's no work to do? You shouldn't even talk about work. Just get fucked up. And have a good time with the um, no, we did. It wasn't really the get kind of get fucked com- up kind of party because it, it was a family Christmas thing. A lot oh, of people brought their I kids. See. It was like decorating cookies and exchanging gifts and uh-huh. stuff like that. But there was a party at the Cheesecake Factory I worked at in Walnut Creek way back in the day. This is a shout out if anyone's listening. We used to have this uh, manager, general manager named Max, crazy fucking dude, great uh-huh. manager, one of the best people I've ever met. Anyways, he used to throw a party. He threw a party for us once where he closed the restaurant early. I think we brought in the DJ, set up speakers, a DJ, cleared out all of the tables really? and just made like a dance floor in the middle of the bar at the Cheesecake Factory in Walnut Creek. So if you've ever been to that restaurant, just imagine know exactly what clearing out about. all of those tables. That was the dance floor. That's, that's and then perfect. the tables over over like by the by the kitchen uh-huh. were like where we hung out. There was food. There was hella drinks. There was hella food. And like it wasn't even like cheesecake food. It was like the cooks making like real carne asada and like making. And then they're nice. also making like cheesecake food. And then there was also like hella beer and drink. Dude, that was a get fucked up party. Wow. That was an awesome party. And they still hold that at Annually? No, no, no. That was like a literally a one-time thing. That's it? Yeah, dude. And you were lucky enough oh. to be at that one-time thing. Dude, I was at the Cheesecake Factory. When I first started at the Cheesecake Factory, yeah. I got the like the last glimmer of the greatness of it. Nice. Yeah, I literally watched that star collapse on You are on so lucky. Yeah. Because I I feel like I'm, I've been hit with bad luck, and whatever I get into, it's always, oh, we used to do that last year. Damn. Like when I... Uh, in we were, one what, of the la- we were one of the last people to go to Disneyland for grad night. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, I was uh, when I was in fifth grade. Mm-hmm. Right when I joined fifth grade, they got rid of the fifth grade lockers. <laughs> you guys had lockers. Fifth graders had lockers when I was in fourth grade. Well, that's good because we watched a movie that yeah. might give you that feeling of what it's like to have an office Christmas. Oh, party. I definitely lived vicariously through it. So what did we, we watch? watch- Office, office Christmas, Christmas party. party. That's right, baddies. If you are listening to this right now, it is probably Christmas Eve. Ooh, this is our Christmas Eve episode. That's yeah. right. So- Otis is here, but we <laughs> turned his mic off because uh, it's just not his time to speak. But no. we will say one thing to you, Otis, and that is Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Otis, we love you. Um, we have a gift in the shape of a turkey leg for you. It's not a turkey leg. And I have a gift in the shape of... Um, and then oh, uh, so we have a great movie for you guys today. That's it right. Was Oficina Navidad. There you go. Um, What's party in Spanish, oh, dude? Man. Partido. Is it Partido? Yeah. I'll go with that. Yeah. Oficina. El, oficina, uh, el, el Navidad Oficina Partida. Oh, man. We're, we're redoing <laughs> hey. this movie right here. Um, 
it's time for the nitty gritty. Yeah, it's time for the nitty gritty. Hey, time for the nitty gritty. Oh, oh, it's time for the nitty gritty. Merry Christmas. Here we go. Here we go. Time for the nitty gritty. It is time for the itty bitty nitty gritty committee. Office Christmas party is rated R. It was released in 2016 and has a runtime of one hour, 51 minutes, or 111 minutes. Did you want me to answer that? Well, Did you I want me to do it? No, 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 no. I mean, it's fine. It's just... That was a very dramatic pause. <sighs> it's fine. We'll do it for the next one. Damn, dude. Uh, this movie is rated 5.8 out of 10 on IMDb. Woo! It's got a flat 40% on Rotten Tomatoes. Flat. 42% on the Metacritic. 42. And will you please, Christian Baltazar, on this glorious Christmas Eve... Yes, glorious. Guess what percentage of Google users like this I'm just going to try to hit it on the head. I have a good feeling about this. 85%. Wow. Wrong. 82%. You know, if you as long as you go in with confidence, that kind of uh, covers the fact that you were wrong. That is great. Have you ever stumped like a teacher by answering a question really confidently? Uh, never a teacher. I did Friends once. for sure. Of course you, because you do that with all of us all the time, what was dude. It? it was like a question. She was like, Alex, do you know what this word means? And I was like, uh, yeah, it means this, this, and this. And she's like, Okay, I'm gonna have no, to. No, she's just like kind of like nodding. She's like, I'm gonna have to look it up because <laughs> that's not the definition I know it, but that sounds really good. Dude, it's all about conviction. That's all it is. Here's the synapses coming right at you, boys. Right at you. When his uptight CEO sister threatens to shut down his branch, the branch manager throws an epic Christmas party in order to land a big client and save the day. But the party gets way out of hand. Uh, it had a budget of only a mere forty. Five million dollars. Oh, that's pretty low for this kind of movie. Yeah, it actually seemed like the actors alone would cost quite a bit of money. Yeah, and like all the shit that happens within the movie, you think that would cost a lot. (laughs) It had to have all been movie magic. A lot of that shit looks Something happened, yeah. Um, How much did it make? Uh, 70 million. It made 114 and a half million. Wow, good job, Office Christmas Party. Yeah, it's it, quite impressive. The critics didn't like it, but we love it. It's it's currently running on television, guys. Uh, it's Christmas time. It's going to be on FX. I think uh, all all today. It's on. And how can you not like it? This is casted with a bunch of heavy hitters. That for brings sure. me to my next point. Let's go ahead with it. Starring T.J. Miller, Jennifer Aniston, Olivia Munn, Jason Bateman, Kate McKinnon, Vanessa Bear. Dude, just like every hard hitter, it's just like uh, Rob Cordray is in it. He's I uh-huh. love. He's so funny. Him, he's so much. The dad from Fresh Off the Boat, Randall Park. Yes. Um, the dude from Deadpool. Oh, the taxi driver from Deadpool, the Indian guy, Karen Sonny. Yes. Uh, dude, Sam Richardson, the guy yep. from uh, Gringo, and like he's mm-hmm. also in. I think you should leave. So good. So, dude. Jimmy Butts, Jimmy Bucklets, Jimmy Buckets is in it, dude. Crazy, yeah. They they threw him in, and uh, that that was a good thing for the party. The whole fucking movie was loaded. Bro. Yeah, a bunch of different comedians, a, a lot of SNL cast members. Um, it, yeah, that makes really sense. It, it seems like it was a good place to have. It seemed like a lot of fun to film. I'll say that right off the bat. Easily, easily. Um, let's just jump right into it. Yeah, dude. So uh, this was off the chain, dude. Okay, so the movie starts off in like uh, it's in Chicago, and yes. there's there's a corporate company that is on. They just kind of hang out and and uh, it seems they make pretty like chill. computer stuff. Yeah, Xenotech. I really don't know. They don't even really because I don't understand it. tech talk nope. at all and nope. they're talking about like oh we gotta close the deal on uh this person oh we gotta sell I, servers I mean, I get to that this because place. that's sales i understand the fact of like yeah sales. i don't know easy, what the servers do but they're selling servers i think that's probably why they don't really get into it because it's just like yeah, yeah so just say they're selling servers yeah and so how does it open up um with uh, jason bateman and olivia or jason bateman like coming in and like being the cool guy he's always the cool guy uh-huh right? oh no even before i think he's like he's talking to his divorce lawyer dude matt walsh yes oh yeah matt, matt walsh, walsh like, from, I hate uh, these UCB. christmas parties he's like these all suck he's these like but we gotta go he's like uh so yeah we know right off the bat jason bateman's in a in getting a divorce he's losing everything a very expensive and then divorce, he goes the to uh work and like he's Knows everybody. He he knows the security guard. He's talking to people. A very charming dude. Yeah, yeah. he's Jason Bateman. Mm-hmm. Gets upstairs. He meets uh, the boss, T.J. Miller. Yes. And T.J.'s like, uh, you know, we got to get morale up. We got to get the Chris. We got to yeah. get Christmas going. And a little bit of background: T.J. Miller is the son of the previous owner of the company who had recently just passed away. Did you see the portrait of the dad? 
The, um, they had a painting in the background at one point. No, what was it? It's clearly Jason Bateman wearing a wig. Oh, is that <laughs> the, really? Yeah, and then they like he has a picture uh, Polaroid later that TJ Miller pulls out of his pocket. Uh huh. And it's like it's clearly Jason Bateman. Really, uh-huh. I wasn't looking that closely enough. I didn't think it was that important important to really notice, but I guess so. That's like a nice little Easter egg. I've only, I really liked this movie. The first time I watched this movie, I knew it was going to be a dumb comedy. Yeah. And even this last time I watched it, I really enjoyed some of the jokes. Yeah. I think it's it's easy to write this off as a silly uh like TJ Miller comedy, but mm-hmm. it's actually quite it's actually really funny. It's got quite a bit of people in it. Yeah. And I was shocked to see like Olivia Munn's really good at, like she's got some really good comedic timing actually. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know where she started out, right? On G4. She was a she was like a talk host of yeah, one I don't of think the that's video where she game started, shows. Dude, I think she started as a model. Oh, probably even before that, I could imagine yeah, that. Yeah, dude, I think that's why she but was I on G four. But I guess her acting career. I mean, I guess in front of a like a video camera. Shut okay, up. She's probably just a, she's fuck. probably just hot, and they're like, we should put her talking about. And she like, I don't want to be a dick, but uh-huh. I think this is how it went. If I remember, because that was she did that with Chris Hardwick, right? I believe so. Yes. Okay. First of all. I think she was the replacement for Sarah Underwood, or was Sarah Underwood the replacement for Olivia Munn? Uh, I think, uh, no, she was the replacement for Sarah Underwood. Okay. Either way, they're both just hot girls who liked video games. And, like, before Worked Twitch out. was a thing, and before, like, hot girls could, like, just play video games and get a bunch of money that way, this was how that they was did it. That was the way it. to do it. And, like, it just so happened that she was really good on television and could act and has, like, a lot of talent. Not taking anything away from these women, uh-huh. but I think initially it started those. off as... We want to put a hot girl talking about video games with nerdy Chris Hardwick. And it definitely worked. I it watched it. It definitely worked. And I watched it at an age, probably like a, as a middle schooler, where I full heartedly believed, oh, wow, Olivia Munn is a gamer. Like, I she's think talking she about, actually might I could be. see Maybe her not too much anymore like that. now that she's a mom, but I think at that time she actually played quite a bit of video games. Yeah. I mean, it's possible, and I'm really crossing my fingers and hoping so, or else my middle school dreams will be crushed. I, this movie had some of the best like one-liners, and I think if you yeah. watch this movie, and just for the one-liners, you can really get some gems. Do you want to play your game that you once played with me? Oh, yes. Where Let's we do say it. quotes out of... Um... Quotes without context. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, <laughs> okay. He says, uh, oh, I like your costume, and then the... Jesus responds, yeah, it's my birthday. (laughs) Um, Jason Bateman says that to Jesus in the (laughs) elevator as they're going up to the office Christmas party. All right. um, Vin Diesel ain't got shit on me. That's TJ Miller when he's talking about the uh, bridge when it's not completely bridged. And he's talking about, oh, you got to go 120 miles per hour at, uh, at quite an angle so that you can make that jump. That's right. The the bridge. I think Chicago is a like better Gotham City than New York because I think those are the same bridges from Dark Knight. Really? Did they shoot Dark Knight in Chicago? I think their allegory for Gotham City was Chicago. You know, like the new one is Oakland and like it's usually New yeah. York. I think theirs was was Chicago. Okay, Chicago. Chicago. Uh, here we go. <clears throat> this one. Uh, it sounds like a um, a similar one, but this isn't it. Hey God, I know I haven't asked for a lot in this life. Granted. I was born rich and white <laughs> and a man and straight. Well, except for that one time in Vegas, but that was Vegas. <laughs> this is TJ Miller as he's prepping to go downstairs to the party. He's uh, he's in his little suite and he's looking in the mirror, pulls out a picture of his uh, sister and his dad, and he's really hoping to close a deal on Walter Davis. Okay, that's right. That is right. The last one Thank here you. for you. This is a tough one. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six lines in a row. Ooh, machine gun fire with mm-hmm. these quotes. And uh, I want you to explain to me what the what was happening when they, when these people said it. Okay. Okay. It's uh, all happened at once. So it's like these. It's just like succession. dialogue. This is yeah, ready? okay. Uh, pictures of people's kids. LinkedIn invites. My girlfriend's always on it. I have a girlfriend. The lack of Asian male representation in porn. Grumpy cat. I mean, it's like it's Garfield, right? Oh, you know the orange, the human dick. Oh, this is um. Uh, they're having a meeting with Jennifer Aniston, who is the CEO of Xenotech, and she asks the question, what does the internet need or what does the internet uh, need less of? Something along those lines. I believe that they're making the pitch to Jennifer Aniston, but Olivia Munn had asked, what's the worst part about the internet? That's what and, it is. And all of them are listing off the worst parts of the internet. But my favorite one is is Rob Cordray's line about uh, Grumpy Cat. He's like, it's just Garfield. <laughs> it's, like- just, it's just Garfield. <laughs> That that was really funny. Randall Park saying uh, the lack of Asian male representation <laughs> in porn, <laughs> in porn specifically in porn, man. Last one, my favorite line of the movie. Oh, there's a car on fire. Did the Bears win? Oh, uh, fuck! I don't know who says that. Um, 
T.J. Miller. Uh-huh, when, he's, when he's driving the, the drug car. That's right. That's right. Ooh, that was fun. Thanks, buddy. Way to switch it up on us. Yeah, I like man. playing the game that way. Yeah, this movie's fucking bonkers. The movie's really funny. Okay, so they go upstairs. Jennifer Aniston comes in and says, hey, guys, we're making cuts. No more bonuses. No Christmas party. That's it. That's the bottom line. Dude, we're shutting down the branch. Bitch. And everyone's like, fuck, dude. Uh, and T.J. Miller makes the best joke. One of my favorite jokes uh, is where he's, they're all in the meeting, and he's like, all right, fine. We won't have a party. And then he looks over at <laughs> like someone else, and he's like, we'll have a little one. <laughs> and Jennifer's like, I can see you. I'm looking right at you. He's like, okay, fine. Not no a- party. Well, it's fine. And then they're doing it back. <laughs> and they're so obvious about it, winking at each other, whispering audibly. Do you ever do that? Like, uh, uh, Can you get away with stuff like that at work? I can't get away with it because I'm not really good at being a mysterious or like sneaky or sly. I've seen you get away with it, <laughs> which is something I'm so jealous of. Like, I cannot get myself out of situations <laughs> because I am who I am. I'm Christian, I'm clumsy, and I'm pretty transparent. You know, saying what I say sometimes gets me in some hot water, and uh, I got to be able to laugh my way out of it. And, yes. if, and if they're not laughing, then I'm definitely not laughing. You're so. definitely like a TJ Miller. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're you're TJ Miller in this. If anything, I'm probably like Jason Bateman yeah, in that kind totally. of duo dynamic. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, all and this Otis silly is shit. Olivia Munn. Otis, Stop Otis me. is a hot girl gamer uh, who got Otis her. Otis is a hot girl gamer. That's the, that's it. <laughs> is that the title of the episode? That's the title Otis of the episode. Otis is a hot girl gamer. Otis the hot girl gamer, man. You know how oh, Olivia man. Munn has that um that gif on like on iPhones of. Her getting a bunch of hot dogs, uh, or thrown ha- not thrown at her. I think she has a bunch of hot dogs already <laughs> in her mouth. That is Otis. We need to take a picture or a video of Otis and make a gif of Otis with twelve well, hot dogs in his mouth. I bet you he could fit more than twelve in his mouth. I'm pretty sure he Otis, could. Otis, f- open your mouth wide, wider. Oh, wider? he could fit a full dog in there. What? They- Are you? <laughs> <laughs> you measure? Wait, we're not. We're not glancing past that. <laughs> what? You measure people's mouths by the size of how many dogs they can fit in there? Dude, my you metric- just say you can fit a whole dog in that mouth? My metric system is- Based on dogs? Small animals. You are gross. All right. If I were to ask someone else to open their mouth, I'd be like, oh, if it was a little smaller- Yeah, with you, two bats. Two bats? Yeah, dude, two bats. Not as big as Otis's because bats are smaller. Okay, real talk. Do you think you could fit a cat's head in your mouth? Yes. <laughs> if I had to, if I, if I was at gunpoint and there was a cat- Put that cat in your mouth. <laughs> I need you to put this cat in your mouth. You know what the difficult part of that is? The cat cooperating. (laughs) So the cat would... It would have to be a cat corpse. Dead? Yes, I'm sorry. I wouldn't have killed the cat. What if he's asleep and wakes up in your mouth? I'm dead. My tongue... (laughs) Cat got your tongue? That's a real thing in that situation. Uh, You know whose cat didn't have their tongue? Who? Kate McKinnon. Kate McKinnon. She played the HR rep in the in the office. And, and she was hilarious. Perfectly, dude. You know, sometimes I think her characters are overdone, like uh, in Ghostbusters and uh, a lot of times on Saturday Night Live. But uh-huh. I think this character was really good. Perfect. Um, I remember we first see her. She she meets Jason Bateman complaining to him, saying, people didn't get my email about oh. wearing conservative clothing at the office. And she walks up straight up to Jamie Chung, who's the hot yeah. Asian girl at the office. Oh, you, know, you know her. I know her. She was in the Dragon Ball Z live action movie. Which was terrible. Um, but maybe on the list. Uh, maybe, if you're down for that. Uh, let's ask the baddies. Baddies, do you like Dragon Ball Z? Probably the anime series, but do you like Dragon Ball Z, the movie? Dragon Ball Evolution, I believe, is the actual title. We'll put uh, the link here. Right here. And if you can't see us, because you definitely can't, um, we are pointing down. And Alejandro is stroking his orange juice bottle. But to continue with that scene, yes. she walks up to Jamie Chung and uh, says, how many buttons are unbuttoned? Like, <laughs> that's too many buttons unbuttoned. And Jamie Chung is getting pissed off because she just wants to express herself. And um, Rob Cordray should have been like, are you body shaming her? Yeah. If she wants to that, wear that. That's also kind of me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you would do that. You would definitely Are you do body it. shaming her? Because yeah. I think she looks beautiful hey that's a win-win situation and i know you're gonna capitalize on that win-win situation the fact that it is modern times and if a girl wants to dress like that a girl wants to dress like that modern times are great dude women are very open to like come up to you and be like hey what's up yeah and i think it's great hey what's up i mean like I, it makes I, it way easier on my part because you you break the ice and i'll jump right in hey girls if you guys want to wear leggings that have words on the butt i'm fine with practicing my reading that way 
You don't read much, huh, buddy? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> just on butts. No, I, I just... I angel. listen to things. Victoria's Secret. I like pink. Guess. I like it all. Abercrombie and Fitch. <laughs> uh, Lululemon. That, that's how... Ooh, Lululemon. Yeah, um, you ever been to Lululemon's? Um, I've never been inside of one, but I, I know that it is a pop in brand right now, and it is quality. Quality leggings. Uh, and guys could wear Lululemon, too. Would you wear Lululemon? No. Um, okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, so they have to make one last plea in order to save the branch. Uh, they think... Uh, what they, what Jason Bateman and T.J. Miller and Olivia Munn decide is that they can make one last pitch to this gentleman who invests in companies, or he works for a company that invests in. Yeah. I don't know what what that guy did. I don't. He's buying servers, and their competition is Dell. And so, he, yeah. Oh, that's it. It's one last contract. If they get this contract, they can save the branch for the next quarter. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's like, I don't really like your culture. That's the word. Yeah. And uh, he's not talking about them because they're all white. He's talking about their work <laughs> culture. <laughs> he's talking about how, like, uh, they're a very brass tax, down to the numbers kind of company. Yeah. And he doesn't like that. And that's the way Jennifer Aniston runs her company. That's right. She runs a tight ship. Yeah. And um, they decide that un- almost on the moment, like, all right, no, we're going to have a Christmas party and you're invited. Exactly. Yeah. And they, they t- uh, before he leaves the building, they say, hey, Walter Davis, you like to party? He's like, huh, I used to when I was younger. And then it zooms in on his face. And it's a crazy montage of everyone at the office. Setting up the party. So much fun, dude. Crazy. Like, they're buying trucks full of ice, trucks full of decorations. Uh, one of the guys, the guy from... Um, I think you should leave. Uh-huh, he, he walks by. He's like, hey, I got a friend who like... <laughs> <laughs> I got a friend who DJs. You want me to call him up? He's not that good, but uh, he'll do it. He was like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And then cut to the party. They look up and it says DJ Calvin. He's like, hey, everybody, I'm DJ Calvin. I'll be spinning for you all night. Foy, 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 foy. Foy, 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 foy. He's, he's like, making the noises with his mouth. Is DJ Calvin look a lot like Tristan? Yeah, they're like, what the fuck? Well, it's the same Tristan's dude. Tristan's friend looks just like <laughs> DJ Calvin. Uh, and he is being vulgar and raunchy on he's the so DJ funny. mic. Later on, not to spoil the ending, but later on when they're trying to like solve the uh, tech technology thing yes everyone's like bringing stuff to sell, solve problems and then he comes he's like i got this dj equipment will that help and olivia Munn's like no probably not <laughs> shot down <laughs> i love what he's yelling during the party he's saying like we gonna get fucked up tonight y'all okay. gonna do some fucking one of my favorite like uh, is that back and forth with kim and kim she's like no no if you are gonna do fucking please go uh, out of the floodlights <laughs> to the right aid parking lot he's like someone's getting pregnant in the parking Fuckin lot <laughs> Oh my god, that energy. I would hire him as a DJ in a heartbeat, That was dude. one of my favorite characters that that guy's ever done. Did that you, one and um, the time-traveling cyborg where he has to get Scrooge to come save oh, the future. Oh, and I think you should leave. <laughs> Baddies, if you haven't checked it out yet, if you want to see some good I sketch comedy. I think you should leave. I think you should leave. That is on Netflix. Um, dude, a bunch of funny characters here. What I really appreciated about this movie is that... I don't know. I Usually there. Yeah, you made a weird noise with your mouth. I'm sorry. Continue. Uh, what I really like about this movie is that there were so many funny characters, but each of them got their moment. At least one moment where you got to know and that fulfilled. Character. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone got. Oh, so let's 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 talk about a couple people's arcs then. So we'll start yeah. with like some of the B characters. Absolutely. So Kate McKinnon. Yes. Starts off as a real uptight, uppity kind of HR manager. She's wearing and turtlenecks you, the entire movie. You can watch her kind of go and like loosen her tie and like, relax and then the party starts and then she like gets up on stage at one point and she's rapping with TJ Miller. Uh-huh. And then she like just gets into it, dude. From there yeah. on, she's down the party. Uh, yeah. But she is hella weird. Like, Do you they, know what they're yelling uh, for her? H R H R. When I say H, you say R H R H R. And she is going wild She's on like, the what? stage. Huh? And huh? she crowd surfs at one point. I've done that. You ever crowd surf? I've never, no, because I've been fat for most of my life and it's terrifying. Not, not for myself. Up, but I, I crowd surfed in Disneyland at on grad night. You did? Yeah. How did I not know this? Dude, it was crazy, dude. It was a crazy moment in my life. Okay, what does it feel like to crowd surf? It's kind of weird because it doesn't feel like one, it just feels like you're floating. It does kind of, because so many people are carrying you, you can't really tell where your weight is. Uh huh. So it's kind of like you're floating hand to hand. Now, tell me about the feeling, the adrenaline rush right before you jump into a car. Oh, I didn't jump. I got picked up and then, like, that's wild. I got like picked up 
and then I was gonna get on some. I think I was gonna get on Ryan McCumber's shoulders or something, and I kind of like leaned back, and someone caught me, and then all of a sudden, whoop, but they just got moving me That's around, insane. and then I got hella far away from all my friends, and, oh, I, and no. I got scared, and I was like, I gotta go back that way, <laughs> and everyone kind of like pushed me back that way. It was. I did think also I was gonna get robbed. I thought someone was gonna steal my wallet at one point, but everyone was yeah. just having a good time. Everyone yeah. was just like at that at that point, everyone was having a good time. It's really feel good. That is crazy because I've only heard of crowd surfers starting from the stage. Yeah, but you were picked up from the ground. Yeah, up. yeah, that is insane to me. Uh, Rob Cordray had a great arc. At one point, he becomes like the king of anarchy. Yes. So when the party really loses all track, at one point they find out that the branch is going to close. They're not getting the deal that they thought they were going to have. And the whole party literally drops into anarchy. There's a scene of Rob Cordray holding a baby, sitting in the Game of Thrones with a hat, doing the gladiator thumbs down. Uh And it's just pandemonium. And it's crazy. First of all, let's back up a bit. They have a live baby a newborn baby at the party to play jesus in the nativity scene but they also say like no kids except this one couple does bring their kid to the christmas party they couldn't get a babysitter he's got an ipad and like can you lock him in the office then like yeah yeah, totally and they start walking away like we gotta lock him in this office quick because those edibles are gonna kick in any minute now (laughs) dude these fucking parents are going ham at this party (laughs) couple goals eat edibles together um, let's see. There are so many other characters. Do you remember the two guys that work in IT that hacked into everyone's emails? Yes. Hella funny. And they capitalized on that skill uh, so that they could find out what the girls at the office's uh-huh. interests are. They're like, okay, this is Sarah. She's standing over there. Her grandmother just died, and she also loves the, the Gilmore girls. Yeah, and they're like, you don't even like Gilmore girls. Yeah, and so... <laughs> No, and so they do a little bit of research. He walks up to the girl. You could see, you could hear almost inaudibly that he opens up with, "Hey, I heard your grandma died," <laughs> and she splashes her drink all over him. He's like, "I should have started out with Gilmore Girls." <laughs> Was one of those guys the guy from Project X? Dude, I can't even remember Project X except for the Asian dude. And that's oh, actually no, I'm thinking that's 21 and over. Uh, never mind. Project X was a crazy film. Yeah. And I, there were so many people in that movie that I can't remember if that was him. Miles Teller was in that movie. Was he? Yeah. He's going to be a new Top Gun. Really? Yeah, he looks buff. He's getting big? No, not buff, but he looks cut. Like, he's got some... He looks good. He's got a mustache, though. That kind of ruins it for me. The mustache is what's pissing you off about, like, the guy getting I think he's Goose's son. Good. I think he's going to be Goose Jr. Really? Yeah. When's that coming out? I don't know, but I'm going to see it. Dude, what's up with all of these actors just getting ripped out of nowhere, man? Like, uh... Uh, Kumail Nanjiani. Hey man, nerds got to get cut. Hey, if you're if you're that dedicated, more power we to gotta you. We got to get back in the gym. Yeah, I mean, hey, we just went to the gym earlier today, and we had a pretty good workout, might I it say? Was like, yeah, it was a good pump. Yeah. Um. So, who? Else, one more character that we can do. Olivia Munn's character arc was also really good. Yeah. Because she was really sheltered, and you can kind of see in the beginning uh, that she plunges herself into work and doesn't want a lot of people to bother her. She's just here to do her job and get out. She just wants to do web design or mm-hmm. computer stuff. And she literally locks herself. In her inside office. of her office. And the only person who's allowed in is pretty much just Jason Bateman. Yeah, they have like a, a romantic history. Well, That's you, yeah, why. you can find out that you see that there's something there. Um, but for whatever reason, Jason Bateman like doesn't really want to pursue it or whatever. He doesn't whatever. act upon it at all. Uh, and then you find out later when they're trapped on the roof that she was like, you know, we could have dated. Like we had that chance, but you didn't want it. And he was like, well, I was just nervous because I just got out of my marriage. He's like, I was still suffering the, from PTSD. He and his ex-wife had been separated, not divorced for a year. They had just got divorced. But I get that, dude. I, I mean, I, yeah. I take... I, I could see how it takes a little bit of time to, to get over. Like, yeah. Like, Even with a girl as gorgeous and as intelligent as Olivia Munn in although this if movie. Olivia Munn was throwing herself at me. Yeah, definitely. I wouldn't have the willpower that Jason Bateman has, for sure. I'm no sorry. Um, yeah. I. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> before we get lost on that tangent. Um, this movie had two X-Men characters. Oh, did? I'm trying to think. I'm thinking really hard. Who? Olivia Munn. Oh, yeah. She's Psylocke. And That's TJ right. Miller's in Deadpool. Oh yeah, okay. He's technically an X Men character. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, he's the bartender over at the at, uh, Sister Catherine's. I forget the name of the bro- uh, school for rejects or something like that. It's really funny. Um, oh man, this movie is bonkers. I we didn't say much about the movie because it is just a crazy party movie. Yeah, but it has some great zingers. It has some great one liners. Um, at one point, one of the guys has a really hot girlfriend that nobody ever sees. The Indian guy from Deadpool again. Yeah, him. Um. And, and he's getting bullied by those two IT guys. Yep. Because they know they know it's fake because he's always like, Oh, I talked to her on the internet. And they probably hacked his shit and they probably know. Yeah. I didn't I, I mean, mean first of all, that is his me. fault. If you don't have a girlfriend, dude, 
Don't try to flex that you have an imaginary girlfriend. Yeah, he, that's stupid. That's um, your fault. But he did cover it right. He got a hooker when the yeah. party happened, and he had the hooker walk around with him. But the hooker was like a really mean lady. And she was like the hooker's pimp? Giving hand jobs to people in the bathroom and selling coke. And then yeah, her, pretty <laughs> fucked up. And then her pimp was... The girl from Workaholics. Which is hilarious, because she, he's like, she's like, oh, you got to pay my boss. And then they make this big deal about the boss coming out of the car, and then it's her, and she's like, hey, how's it going? I don't do handshakes. I do hugs. And she's like a super she's nice, so quirky sweet. girl. She play, she's playing the same character she played in 22 Jump Street. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she's really good at playing that character. Um, yeah. At being kind of like on both ends of the spectrum. Quirky, super... but also a villain at some point. Uh, yeah. Somehow. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I, with that being said, the escort does also bring cocaine to the party and puts it oh. next to the <laughs> snow machine. And it gets accidentally mistaken for fake snow, and they throw the whole bag in the machine, and it poof, shoots a big cloud of cocaine into the face of Walter Davis, who, who is the guy that, that they're, they're trying, trying to close in on. To close the deal on. And the entire time when he's at the party, he thinks it's a bad idea. He's trying to get out, but Jason Bateman is clearly he, upset about something. Yeah, he he just he's not having the time of his life. He's chilling on one drink, and it's not until he gets hit in the face with that. He doesn't even have a drink. No, he gets, I think, one drink. I think that's all. Um, and then he gets in the face with that cocaine, and he's going wild. He's like, it was, that snow was really bitter. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> throughout the entire movie, there are trace marks of cocaine left on his face. I can only imagine getting a cannonball of cocaine blasted into your face, dude. Yeah, I mean, you would have actually, to go Actually, I don't know wild. if that would do too much to you, because imagine how much would actually get into your nose. Yeah, like was he exhaling mouth? or inhaling? Like it would, yeah, because it, it could only probably do effect if it got in your nose, because if it gets on your skin, I don't know, can you, like, if you rub coke on your skin, does it do anything? No clue, no clue. I, I don't, don't think that's how cocaine works. No, it's not a topical no, type of No, it's not drug. a cream. No, not at all. I mean, you would have to inhale it or taste it or... It's got to be ingested. Yeah, um, usually in these situations, we'd say baddies... Uh, let us, let know, us know, but, but don't I mean, let us know. <laughs> whatever, and hey, you know, party it up. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, mom. Ah! <laughs> um, um, yeah. Any? Uh, do you have any big notes that you want to say about this movie? No. All I really wanted to do with this movie was just talk about it freely because there's so much that there is a lot dude and it's it's very funny i think it's really underrated in its humor i think people aren't giving it the credit that it is it's a dumb holiday movie i mean yeah uh it's not there's not much to it you know you can't yeah. go in here and when they made it they knew exactly what they were doing let's just For get sure. a bunch of these comedians together and yep. it is that type of movie that we always run into where it is loosely scripted and a lot of the bits are improvised yeah for sure uh, to a certain extent and you can see that at the end of the film there are shits in the bloopers where they retry things <laughs> over and over that's my favorite part one of my favorite parts was the uber driver that jennifer aniston rides with. also a comedian also another comedian i've seen her stand up a couple of times and she's really funny She's okay. Okay. But in the movie, she was really funny. Yeah. She was calling. It was her first day on the job. Uh, she had a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of people cancel on her. She's like, uh, you know, my, Carol's my grandmother's name, too. And Jennifer Aniston's <laughs> yeah. like, how would I know that? How, how would I know that? And she's saying, like, you don't look like a Carol. Carol's for, like, uh, like old people. Hi, I'm Carol. You don't uh, hear that very often. No, not often. And he's she's calling everyone bitches and whatnot. And she's like... Um, yeah, that, yeah, she is really funny, dude. I would love to land that kind of part in a movie, like just kind of like off to the off to the side, just like a very minor character. But well, when you're starting out, memorable. that's pretty much what you get, bro. Either that or like a very small extra. And you gotta start out somewhere. You'll never be that small. Speaking of which, uh, sidebar: uh, I'm gonna have my headshots done. If you want to get your headshots redone, dude. Once I get my hair cut, yeah, yeah, uh, I'm gonna uh, do something special with my hair for the nice. new year. I'm gonna do something special with my body. It's called losing weight. <laughs> And before I get a headshot. Oh, interesting. You want to make your head seem smaller? No, not seem smaller. But when I lo- it's <laughs> when I lose weight, you could see it in my face. Uh-huh. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, okay, then let's go ham, bro. Let's let's, let's go let's ham go, on those. Let's do the Camille Nanjiani and and cut out. It, you know what it is? What? Nutrish. That is, it's nutrition. It's all nutrish, bro. Man. It's all nutrish. I get so lazy with my diet. I know, though, dude. It's no more of this for my juice or the this bottles or it's none of this shit, dude. It's really hard to just stay on like a strictly water, protein, and carb type of diet, you know? Like yeah. clean. Like yeah. let's not eat fast food. Let's not have soda, energy drinks, no nothing. Fuck, dude. I, I'm kind of, I'm getting back, I'm dabbling back into it, you know? I'm, I'm eating a lot better and I haven't really had too much. I'm Although I'm drinking juice right now, so that's not, you know, the best uh, thing it's, to drink. It's not the worst thing. I it's mean, not the worst thing, but it's not good. Yeah, it's um, better than if you were drinking like a can of soda. Um, then uh, 
There are worse things, dude. I think you're fine. This has been Locker Room Talk with Christian and Alex. Hello. Uh, join us next. Uh, we'll be discussing the pros and cons of sauna heat. Yeah. Join us next time. Um, on KNPR. Folks, it is Christmas Eve. It uh, is. And we have a best person on set award? Or yes, we do have a best person on set award. You, you want to go first? Yeah. All right. Let's hear it. T. J. Miller. Fucking knew it, dude. I fucking knew it. Of course, it. dude. He had the best lines. Um, he is the leader of the branch. He's trying to do the best. Uh, and he is really funny, dude. His his acting is, I think, this is the kind of character he should be playing. This is yeah. exactly what is up, up his alley. He's a smart, smart mouthy, smarmy kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, I liked it. I think he did a good job. I'm going to give mine to TJ Miller as well. Oh, the double team. Double team on TJ Miller. I should not say it like that. That's disgusting. We'll, but We'll hit him up. We'll say, hey, hashtag double team TJ Miller. Yep. Hey, TJ, you want to be double teamed? Bye. Hit us up. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was fantastic, dude. He had the best quips. You yep. know that he was having a good time with the improvised lines. Hopefully. He's just a funny guy. His presentation, his delivery, the way he looks. <laughs> yeah. I hear Michael Bay hates him. Why is that? Oh, because of the Transformers movie. Um, uh, was he in Transformers, like the later ones? He was in Transformers 4. Uh, I haven't seen anything like after the Shia uh, He gets films. killed off in like the first 15 minutes. Wow, that's how much Michael Bay hated him? Yeah. Oh, He okay. gets like frozen in metal, something like that. Oh, that sucks. Well, um, yeah, uh, baddies, we hope that you had like a fantastic Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas, guys. It's also the fourth day of Hanukkah, so happy Hanukkah. Is that a fact, really? Uh, second day of Hanukkah? It's something. I didn't. That's... Yeah, Hanukkah starts on the 20th. Oh, that's cool, cool. Yeah. Maybe the 23rd. Maybe happy the Hanukkah, Hanukkah. Happy Christmas. Yeah. Happy Hanukkah, guys. Hopefully Kwanzaa you... starts next week. Happy Kwanzaa next week. Uh, we, yeah. We're going to have a New Year's Eve Special. show as well. That's right. So that's yeah. coming up. Keep an ear out for that. Um, yeah. Um, if you want to keep supporting the podcast, please follow us on Apple Podcasts. Don't forget to rate and review. We're on Spotify as well and all other listening platforms. Um, check us out at ICBTB Podcast on Instagram. And if you're not following that yet, what the fuck are you doing? But to, to follow, you can follow us. Yeah. You can follow the page still. Yes. And you could follow our personal handles at Christian Has Asthma. And call underscore me, Jesus. That's right. And guys, guys. Merry freaking Christmas. Merry freaking Christmas. Hopefully holiday shopping went well. If you're still doing it right now, probably like me, uh, I can actually guarantee that I'm shopping currently while I'm listening to this. That's a fact. Um, um, same here. Yeah. Yeah, be safe. Don't trample anyone and don't get trampled. Alex, if you're in Target right now, don't forget to get a gift for your dog because you always forget to get Sochi a gift and then mom and dad get her a gift and you look like a real douche not getting your own dog something. What so. do you usually get your dog? Uh, you know, actually, I, I used to get her like uh, pig ears and rawhide bones and things like that, but I, I've read recently that that's not you're not supposed to give that shit to dogs. Really? Why? That's like really bad for their digestive tract. And pig ears and rawhide yeah, bones? Yeah, because it like it can sh- shard and it's it's bad for the it's just not digestible okay. there's a reason why people don't eat pig's ears okay yeah that's a <laughs> filipinos sometimes eat but they don't dry ears. it and tan it like a piece of leather hey, that's true we eat it cooked we fry it with salt and pepper and then mm-hmm. banana chips good good healthy alternative yes it is but don't eat too much of it that's still a lot of uh, eight chips sugar. eight chip limit guys if i see you on the street with nine chips i'm gonna eat one <laughs> and i'll be like you're good to go <laughs> Then I'll kiss you for doing so good on your nutrition. Uh Uh-huh. We're taking Otis's job, and we're kissing people out there. Look out, baddies. Look out, baddies. We're kissing baddies. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Mwah, 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 mwah. (laughs) Fwah, (laughs) fwah, fwah, fwah. Mwah, mwah, mwah. All right, see you guys later. Merry Christmas. Bye. We're going to kiss you.